Hello, Martin. You're on the air. Is this Martin? This is, yes. How you doing, buddy? I am doing fantastic. I would love that 30 Seconds of Mars song, by the way. So. <laughs> hey, got to make it fun. Got to play some good music, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, I was as I was saying to my, some of my listeners, uh, there was a little bit of confusion, and it's not necessarily your fault through... My phone lines, I was a bit of confusion with the actual numbers because that's why I gave you two because I wasn't sure due to my problems that I was having which one would work. And apparently you found the one that worked, so that's all that matters. <laughs> First time's a charm with me. I was pretty excited about that. Oh, not a problem. Not a problem. I'm glad to have you on. I'm glad you actually had time in your busy schedule, man. <laughs> Life is crazy. That's a good thing, right? Hey, yeah, you can't complain. Now, I know you've definitely, you got, you and a lot of the Tough Enough guys have taken a lot of time to answer some questions and and so forth about your experiences with Tough Enough. And, well, I try to make it fun, but I think I'm going to probably ask you a lot of the questions that you may have already been answered or not, maybe not. I like to kind of put a little twist in it if I can, if you don't mind. Bring it on. All right. Well, I'll probably start with the most basic one that you get asked probably all the time. How did you get your start in wrestling? Um, well, I actually, I always liked it when I, since I was a little kid. Um, well, older than most people is like the Monday Night Wars when I actually, before I started watching it. But, uh, I got interested. My friend decided that we wanted to go to a WWE event in Salt Lake City. Uh, I was standing there in line for a WWE event, and some local wrestler, actually ended up being my trainer, uh, came and gave me a flyer for his next show, and, uh, I thought it was cool. All right. And I shut my pocket, left it on my desk for like four months because that's how often I clean my room. And uh, <laughs> found it four months later, and I'm like, hey, well, I like wrestling. This sounds fun. Well, let's try it. And so, uh, yeah, I tried. Just called up the promoter here in Salt Lake City, and here I am. I've gotten the ring. As soon as I stepped in those ropes, I knew this was something I wanted to do. Nice, nice. That's very awesome. What do you think about the WWE uh, creating their own network now? I think it's a long time coming. I think it's a long time coming, and it's an excellent opportunity, especially for the guys who want to try and get in right now, because I think it's going to bring more fans to the WWE. It, 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 it's a network where, hey, people who want to watch wrestling are see it, and if people are going to hear about it. If they don't watch wrestling, then they're going to check it out. People. So uh, I think this is great for you guys trying to get into the business. Of course, yeah. It's, yeah, uh, I think it's definitely, a great opportunity, yeah, I mean, especially for me. It allows uh, the the, uh, the younger fans to get familiar with what us, the old school fans, were really into during the Monday Night Wars and even before then, in the 90s and the 80s and so forth, what we grew up watching. Exactly. Like, right now, that Kevin Nash story, the uh, with the, the stuff I have right now, some of the stuff the, the fans are so young they don't understand. Why do oh, they call I him Super Shredder? Oh, I have to tell you about that, man. <laughs> Why do they call him Super Shredder, et cetera? Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> Who is this Kevin Nash guy? Are they friends? That's cool. Well, I don't know. I didn't know he was friends. It's because you were like in the womb still when it was happening. So yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's great. It's great. Now, actually, you answered a couple of questions before I had the chance to ask, which is awesome because I know that um, I was going to ask you about what do you feel about what's going on currently in WWE with the uh, CM Punk, the Triple H, the uh, Kevin Nash situation, which led me to a story after SummerSlam. A kid had actually walked up to me and asked me. Who was the big guy that attacked CM Punk? <laughs> uh, it, it made, made me really feel old, man. You have no idea. I've been watching Kevin since in the since he was Oz in like the early 1990s. Vinny wow. Vega. Wow. So yeah, See, I've been watching for a long honest, time. Like, like I said, I had not watched wrestling before the Monday Night Wars, so I never knew he was Diesel. Uh, so oh, that's yeah. that's the thing that threw me off is I knew him as the NWO Kevin Nash. Yeah, yeah. So. I didn't know this whole five years, six, uh, all these years of history that he had the WWE, well, mm-hmm. WWF that time, that uh, I didn't know about. So that was kind of trippy for me. So I, I think it's a learning experience for me because I have friends who we go, and I actually have film sessions with my friend Paul and Derek, and uh, we have film sessions where we just watch old-school wrestling. We were watching the Bushwalkers the other day. Oh, there you go. Yeah, they're still around, too, I bet you. I bet you're still doing some independent shows in Bushwhackers. Oh, I'm sure, but I'm definitely not stealing any of their moves. But, hey, it's fun to watch to see what it used to be like. <laughs> Very true. Hey, now, i got a question now. As far as the Tough Enough goes, um, how, how did you hear about it, and what convinced you to actually try out? Uh, to be honest, I heard about it 
um, the, when it was the very first few seasons, I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. I want to watch that. But I was playing my sports, doing what I was doing at that time. It really wasn't too into it back then. But that was like seven, or what was that, like nine years ago? Um, so I, kind of, I did kind of do what it was. And then uh, when, I, when I came back up, I'm like, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. And I actually got hit up on Facebook by uh, one of the producers. Really? So uh, I thought they were they were ripping me. They were playing a big joke on me. So I didn't even respond to them for a couple of days. So I'm like, I sat here in bed one day, and I thought, maybe it is. What if it wasn't a joke? Like, mm-hmm. what what is this, this huge thing? And so I contacted them and, uh, and uh, said, yeah, hey, you're on the WWE radar. And uh, give me a call at this number. So I'm freaking out at work, and you got this guy at a, behind a desk at the brokerage firm in a suit, freaking out that hey, I might be on a wrestling show. And hey. uh, so yeah, and uh, so yeah, I went, I called him, and the rest is history. I ended up being on the show after weeks and weeks and weeks of interviews and paperwork. And God, I had to. That must have been a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it, it was scary because you're doing all this work just for the chance. But it put you in perspective: is do you really want to do this? Yeah, this is what well, I, I really, really want to do. So hell yeah, I'm gonna write this. Are you still there? I'm still here. Yeah. Oh, I thought I lost you there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, the reason I'm asking too is because I, I it kind of led into another one. When you started into the the res when you got into wrestling. At that point, who was your, or at least now at this point in time, being a wrestler that you are now, who has been your inspiration to motivate you to want to continue on in your path to eventually make it onto the WWE roster? I want to say, right, I'm going to preface this because I'm, I don't want to say I'm embarrassed, but this is the guy I love. I love Goldberg. He was, I came from a football background. I was a wide receiver, and I always wanted to spear the living shit out of somebody. Okay, I'm yeah, sorry if I'm going to say that. No, 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 um, it's fine. Okay, sweet. Honestly, All right. I could be me then. Um, no, no, no. I, yeah, want I, would, you to, I want you to feel as comfortable as you want to be. Say what you got to say. Hey, get it all out, and feel free. It's a full forum, man. You can have fun with this. I don't want you to feel like you can't say certain things. You can say whatever you want. Awesome. Um, yeah, I always wanted to spear someone, and I would never got the chance as a wide receiver too much. And mm-hmm. if you do, it's usually a, it ends up being a penalty. So uh, I connected with Goldberg because I had that football background. And then I got more into the wrestling. Then I figured out, well, he does do only, like, four moves. And it went from, like, he only needs four moves that are so cool that that's all he needs to, like, okay, what else can he do? Mm-hmm. And then I started watching more wrestling, getting more at to it. And uh, Shawn Michaels really is the innovator and everything. He's the reason I'm doing this. And he's going to be the inspiration. But Goldberg got me into it. So I go all credit to Goldberg. I mean, he's the guy that caught me. Oh, yeah, Goldberg, the Goldberg chance. But uh, Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels is the man that made me want to do this. Sweet. So, and I, I, I've had, I have met him before, just saying hi as we walked by in the locker, in the locker room in the back. Um, but never actually got a chance to really shake his hand or have a longer than two second conversation with him. Um, kind of like a Shawn Michaels, by, hey, you know, hi, bye, kind of thing, right? Exactly. You're always back there, and the the way it is in wrestling is you always want to shake everybody's hand. Um, but when you're in that locker room, you're if they're talking, you you, you don't want to like bug them, I guess. So, mm. uh, so but yeah, he he was just walking. He was talking with uh, Triple H, so I didn't want to bug him. I just said, hey. And they both said, hey. So. Uh, well, I do have an, a question to ask, and I hate to even ask this question because it's just it doesn't seem like it'd be a good question to ask. But like I said, you know. I really think, personally, had you not been injured, you would have won the whole thing. That's how talented I've seen that you were. You, you didn't get into the drama BS. You were there. You were, you were doing the things. You were doing them right. And you were impressing the judges, no doubt, and even Steve. So, I mean, do you feel? I mean, do you personally feel you would have actually been able to take the whole show and actually been, been the tough enough champion had you not been injured? And in honestly, and I want to be as, I want to be as humble as, as possible. Yes, hell yes. I really do. Um, I didn't see anyone there that was stepping up. I, there was people that that shined. Um, I definitely had major competition with a lot of the guys, uh, but I I really do think I would have 
taken the I would I really do think I, they would have turned out a lot different if I had not broke my ankle obviously and I would have been in the final two. Obviously I can't say yes, Stone Cold Steve Austin would have picked me because that's his decision. Oh, that's um, true. But uh I definitely believe I had everything to take that spot and be the guy that Steve Austin would have picked. And I have he has I've had had phone conversations since tough enough. And uh, he says, damn well, if you wouldn't have broken your ankle, you might have damn well won this thing. No. And a lot of people feel that way, man. Really, no doubt. And I'm trying to – I know that you have, you know, respect for the people that you've competed with and so forth, but you, you, there's some people that just have it and there's some people that just don't. You had it, and you still have it. I'm not saying that you couldn't go back in and do it again because, without a doubt, I think you can definitely go through it and shine. But I do have one thing I want to bring to your attention. I think we may have a caller calling in to may want to ask you a question. Do you feel like answering a question? Oh, yeah, yeah. Bring him on. All right. Let's take a look. Hello, caller. You're on the air with Wrestling With Life. Do you have a question for Martin? Hello? Hello. You're on the air. Do you have a question for oh, Martin? We do. Well, I just <laughs> – I'm really sorry to take up the camera. I just wanted to say hi to Martin. Um this is Allie from Twitter, at Allie Original. <laughs> Allie, how are you doing, girl? I'm doing uh, fabulous, thank you. And yourself? I am doing very well. Allie was, when things started happening, Allie was one of the first people that tweeted me regularly. So, Allie, I do appreciate your support. You very are cool. very so, welcome. Did you, did you have, have a question, question for me? Feel free to ask. Oh, <laughs> I just wanted to say hi. I mean, I, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Please, I welcome anybody to call in and say hi, you know, hang out. If you have questions, feel free to ask. Or were you just kind of calling in just to listen? Or um, Well, um, actually, I can't even think of a question, but I just called to say hi. Allie, <laughs> 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 I, 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 I do remember it. I added you on Facebook. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, cause, because I, I'm new. I was new to Twitter. I created it years ago, and Rima really, Rima Faki, she's she's an amazing woman. Uh, she really harped after the show was after I broke my ankle. Actually, um, I got to spend a little bit of time with her, and she said, "Get on Twitter, get a, get this set up, because um, you don't have people steal your name. Because there's been fake profiles of me on Facebook and Twitter." Absolutely, absolutely, there has been. I definitely have seen fake profiles of just about anybody and everybody. So yeah, I, I I couldn't agree more for you to reach out to your fans and and talk to them because you you do got fans, man. Believe it or not, and you do got people that really believe that you could take you could have you you should be on the WWE roster now. And you know what I want to let those fans know: I'm busting my butt. My ankle feels. I'm in the ring, my, and my ankle is hurting like hell. But to be in all honesty, I'm so grateful for the fans that I have and those who talk to me. Uh, I do know who you are, and I do remember you. In fact, Ollie was one of the very first ones who started tweeting at me regularly, and so I actually reached out to her Facebook, and I added her on Facebook, and my Facebook, I, I'll give my information out like crazy. Uh, and I, I don't just have the fan page. I'll give you my regular page until it reaches the 5,000-person limit. Uh, my fans, I appreciate them more than anything, and they mean more to me than they know. Uh, to me now at this point, it, I am busting my butt, and it's not just for me anymore. Uh, there's people who want me to succeed and want to see me in that ring, and I think it's an honor, and I really do think it pushes me harder than I thought it could go. So I appreciate yeah, all I you fans out actually, there. I'm sorry, go ahead. So I appreciate all the fans out there. If you write me, I will try to get you, I promise. <laughs> No, and I'm actually proud to say that I am actually a fan as well, and I'm actually on your Facebook, and I do follow you on Twitter as well. And I appreciate the fact that you, you reached out and, and took the time to do this. Now, I do have one question, and then after that I want to do kind of like a little game, a little word association, so to speak. The well, last question I have before we do that is, if you had an opportunity before, let's just say WWE, you know, it's not not possible at the moment, would you consider Ring of Honor possibly uh, impact? Uh, and, and if so, why? And if not, why not? I would definitely consider it. I would definitely never burn any branches or throw away any opportunities. Um, definitely consider it. Um, I do believe with Tough Enough, I think we have a year agreement. We have some kind of agreement. I'm not sure. Okay. I have to look at it. I don't know if I'm even allowed to talk about it. 
But uh, no, no, it's fine. I mean, I you you don't I don't feel don't feel that you have to say anything that you don't want to say. Yeah, exactly. Don't get myself in trouble. Now you know if I will or not. So to be on the safe side. Um, but no, definitely. And uh, I've been watching. I watch as much wrestling as I possibly can. Uh, mm-hmm. I I love wrestling. WWE and, and honestly, to me, is the pinnacle. Uh, but I love all wrestling, and there's op- definitely opportunities out there. So uh, I'm definitely not going to throw away any, op- any opportunities. Uh, but definitely, WWE is my goal. Yeah, I mean, everything you can look it up as uh, just you know lessons that you can learn along the way, and and you know from people that you can learn from. And I, on a side note, Ali, if you're still listening, feel free to call back in and listen if you'd like. We lost her. It looks like we lost the call there with her. If she was still wanting to call in, feel feel free to call back in and hang out. I don't. I trust me. I don't mind. You can if you want to just call in and listen, or just continue listening because my the show will be on demand and I will post the link to Martin's page. To, so that way fans can listen in and find out what kind of good guy this guy is. He's really sounds like probably one of the most down to earth guys you'll ever meet. And by the way, Ali, I appreciate you calling in, and I appreciate you saying that good stuff about me. It's all lies. I'm a total jerk. I swear, <laughs> not really. But uh, <laughs> no, I appreciate and it. And I appreciate it. You can joke about that. it too. You can have fun with it. And that's what matters. Man, I'm literally doing this in my room. I, I, I bought my house when I was 24. I I have people downstairs where I'm doing a little barbecue. Um, I got a cool roommate who moved in. Uh, I got a four bedroom house. I live here by myself, so it's like, why not have roommates? Nice. So, uh, if anyone want any ladies want to live with me, uh, no, uh, <laughs> go for it, no, man. Hey. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> but no, um, I got, <laughs> um, no, I'm in Utah, so yeah, I, got, I ended up getting a pretty cool roommate. He's a cool cat. I got some people downstairs. They're having a barbecue, and I'm upstairs in my room right now. And you talk about making fun of yourself. I'm literally in a Green Ranger Power Ranger shirt and uh, Ninja Ninja Turtle slippers that are all Michelangelo, and I'm wearing a spun I'm wearing a Ninja Turtle hat and a SpongeBob wristband. And if you if you follow me on Twitter, you've seen the pictures. I dress like a dork, and I'm damn proud of it. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's definitely a, a great. You know, if you can't laugh at yourself every once in a while, then then there's something wrong with you. Have <laughs> exactly. Fun. You definitely sound like you have a lot of fun. I definitely have a lot of fun. I definitely work hard, so I might as well play hard as well. Um, so, but make them equal. Don't play harder than you work, or else you're gonna screw yourself. Now, if you let's go ahead and play this uh, word association game, and you know what? You can be as nice, you can be as brutally honest, you can be. It's your opinions. It doesn't mean it's a fact. It doesn't mean it's fiction. But I definitely would love to get your opinions on certain people that you've met, I'm sure, over the time that you were with Tough Enough. If I say a name, say the first thing that comes to mind when you when you hear this name, the name of this person. Sound cool? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, we'll start with Tough Enough winner Andy Levine. Quiet. Hey, so that's, do, I, do, I, do, I, do I elaborate on it? If Do you want you me to elaborate to, on it or just say it? Feel free, man. It's quiet. He really legitimately, he was in the gym. I respect the shit out of him. And uh, But, man, if you're there, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yeah, work your butt off of what he did. He worked his butt off in the gym after work training. And a lot of us did just, I think Andy really did work out maybe excessively, but a lot. So give credit to him. But uh, enjoy the experience as well. He went to bed really early, mm-hmm. and uh, that's awesome if you're doing great. But uh, there's people that performed mm-hmm. that were, like Jer- Jeremiah was performing well, uh, Luke was performing well, and they partied until like 5 o'clock in the morning. So just enjoy the experience is what I'm really trying to say. And I, I don't think Andy really enjoyed the ex- tough enough experience. He was very. I don't think I saw him smile much, unless he was with Christina. So, good guy. I respect him, but come on, man, have some fun, enjoy your life. <laughs> All right, I'll move on to trainer Booker T. Booker T, one funny individual. I think uh, he didn't really get to spend much, too much time with us as much as he did uh, Trish or Bill, did, even Steve, even. But uh, Booker T. Uh, he was always doing the SmackDown tapings, but he would always just crack a joke all the time. He would do this funny flex thing uh, where he just pop up his shoulders and just be be huge all the time. He's an in shape man at whatever age he is, but he 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 pops up really big and 
he was always repeat things. In fact, I took it to practice. They would always do the, okay, we're rolling cameras, and they're coming out. He goes, rolling or holding, and he'd always yell. He just, he Booker T, anything he says is just funny because of his voice. So uh, I love Booker T. He's a good guy. Yeah, Booker was a part of the Harlem Heat back in the 1990s for WCW. I'm not sure if you remember and that. And that's where I remember him from. That's where I remember him from, yes. The fire pants, yeah, I remember that with the tape on his nose. Oh, no, that was his brother, right, the tape on his nose? I think the tape on the nose was his brother, Stevie Ray, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's where I remember him from, so. All right, that, that's pretty now cool. we went on with Andy. Now, you mentioned Luke. What do you think about him? How do you feel about him as a person, as an individual, as a performer? Very confident. I don't want to say cocky because I get the cocky thing all day. And, yes, <laughs> I, I maybe I will say cocky, I don't know. He's very confident. I do have to say he's intelligent. He backs it up. So I don't. I, I don't want to talk trash on him. He's very. No, no, no. That's not. That's not the point of that. No, no. It's just. I mean. Yeah, I no. I understand. I just. I get this. I get this question every. A lot of interviews. Um, how was Luke really a douchebag? Was Luke this? Was Luke this? Um, oh no, Luke I'm not was bad. exactly what you saw him on TV. No, I understand. Luke was what you see him on TV. Um, every once in a while, in fact, I texted him like a week and a half ago. You don't see us hanging out at the beach, but uh, uh, I did hang out with him after the finale. He's very confident in what he, he was doing. He, he connected more with Jeremiah, and I connected more with the, the entire rest of the cast. But uh, yeah, I don't even know. I don't know what to honestly, say about man, him. I, I wouldn't look at it like trying to bash Luke because yes, he gave the the cocky asshole type persona, but honestly, I think that was a part of the show, while the cameras are running and when the cameras are not on I think that's when the real personality comes out and I'm sorry to, to honest, say it like that, but maybe that's true. Go ahead, go ahead No, no, it's okay, go ahead To be honest, everything you saw on the show was him uh, and we didn't have us twist anything so the cocky persona, that is him okay. um, There was stuff I called him on and he had reasons for stuff like okay, I'll give an example um we every time we'd go to training, and then we'd come back and we'd have this food laid out for us, like great, and it's kind of like a buffet. You go put your plate, and we sit at this really long table. Mm-hmm. Um, and he would always have to sit on the head of the table. I, I I think all it is is he's a cocky individual, which is great. He has stuff to back it up. He just I think I don't know if it's an alpha man complex or what he has, but he has to sit that on the head of the table. That could very well be true. Yeah. Very well, but true, and I think all men have it. It's just mm, you force it on people. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I my I don't know. He, he, he was a great guy at the finale. Um, he was a great guy during the show. He's just the cocky douchebag is party part of him. He's a good guy too, but he's got that. And uh, I respect yeah, his ability. Like, I definitely do. I think he could definitely be on the roster now with some of the young guys that are there because he's got the attitude. He's He's got the ability to back it up, like you said, and I think he would fit in perfectly. I really do. I really do. I really do think so too. And uh, in all honesty, I've tried to bring him down to Utah. He just said I'm going to take some time. I'm like that's fine, uh, because <laughs> I I think uh, that uh, the people who watch WWE tough enough, you're going to want to see the guy who didn't shake the other guy's hand. Automatically, that's heat. Mm-hmm. You're going to want to see that guy fight this guy. Period. I think that'll be a draw. Yeah. So uh, if anyone wants to see Mark South versus Luke, I think it'd be a good draw. Um, and I consider I, I own a wrestling promotion in Utah. I try to bring him down here, and he uh, he has been doing too many indie shows, but uh, he said he needed some time. That's cool. But uh, I really do think that'd be a good match, and I have respect for him like crazy. I would love to see that. I would definitely, I mean, hey, if it comes out and it happens, then maybe I'll check it out on YouTube or something. But definitely wouldn't mind checking it out because you two definitely could put on a show. And I think it would be fun to watch. Oh, it's definitely. I would, think, I, would, I would love doing it. I think it would be really fun to do. Now, i got we another Matt one Cross here. Matt Cross down here, actually. What's that? We actually ended up bringing down Matt Cross. Matt Cross came down to my uh, UCW Zeros, why, uh, my company I don't hear in Utah. And Matt Cross came down here. Uh, Matt, he was limited at least third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, Matt is one hell of a wrestler. I do have to yes, say that he, he came was. Up, I was definitely surprised to see him go too. Yes, in all honesty, we were all planning on okay, Matt's the guy we're gonna have to beat out. He's been here for this long, and 
we saw him just jumping around the place. Matt, Matt is one hell of an agile and amazing person. Heck yeah, he is. I was definitely disappointed to see him go, but I think what they were looking for was somebody that had the attitude that, that Luke had, but with the ability that Matt had. Well, what do I sense? fit in? Thanks, Jerk. <laughs> Oh well, no! You know, honestly, you you don't you're confident, but you're not cocky. You have the ability, and you show it. That's the best way yeah. I can sum it up. You, you you're not cocky to say that you're cocky. You're confident in your ability, and you back it up. He was a little bit quiet, and that's not a bad thing. But he needs if he for them to bring him into WWE. Honestly, and it's just an opinion. I'm not a wrestler, and I never claim to know anything more than what you guys knew. <laughs> if he could bring out that personality that I think he truly does have, he just he's not out. Then maybe he he can definitely make it because they're looking for personality, if anything. Yeah, but definitely personality, and I think he definitely has the ability to be in the WWE roster. So, um, I know there's a lot of guys that in, that were actually on Tough Enough that I do think have the ability to do so. What do you think about uh, Mr. McMahon? I'm sure you got the chance to chat with him, or maybe even just to see him. Um, I I have actually never actually got a chance. To talk with him, we walked by him at our finale, and in all honesty, uh, or not the finale, yes, the premiere and the finale. I'm sorry, but the, uh-huh. the premiere, I was rivaling with pain and uh, hating life, but enjoying life at the same time. Because um, the premiere of uh, Tough Enough was right after WrestleMania, uh, and yes, was that was about a week and a half before after I got my ankle surgery. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, it was a week and a half or so, two weeks maybe after my surgery, but I was still on crutches. And uh, the the trainer, I was back there in my crutches. I'd been on crutches. I just had surgery the week before, the week before or two weeks before, whatever it was. And uh, they told, they said, you don't have to go out there. You can just stay back here and the rest of the cast will go out. And because uh, if you can't walk, we can't let you go out in these crutches because that'll kill the rest of the What's show. People happen? will know you didn't win. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you, you're you're about to tell a guy who just fractured his ankle, and who's been wanting to do this for years, and who sits at home and dreams about it, and who hasn't, who sits there and plays with action figures because that's how I come up with new moves. I sit here and play with action figures for hell's sake. You're about <laughs> to tell a guy who has a fractured ankle, that he can't go out there. And you can either sit back here with your crutches, or you can suck it up and walk out there without crutches. Screw that. So I put my crutches down, and I, I walked out there. And uh, we had to change a few things around, and I appreciate Triple H for doing so. Um, but Triple H was kind of going around and telling us how to do things before the show. And uh, he moved me to the back so no one can hopefully tell. And I do appreciate, and I, don't, I didn't even notice until... I came home and watched it. I didn't it. even notice. Stone Cold Steve it. Austin. You know, I didn't even uh, notice that, that you were actually injured, to be quite honest. So they did a great job in hiding it. That was the point. So, awesome. And legitly, I put down my crutches as we walked up the stairs in gorilla position and walked out. Um, and then as soon as I came back there, I asked, where the hell are my crutches? Because we taped up my ankle like crazy. The trainer said, it's your choice, your 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 call. I'm like, awesome, I appreciate that. I'm going out there holding my crutches. But uh, I didn't even notice it until about two weeks later when I watched the premiere, um, is that we got in, we all had to get in the ring. And that was my foot that I had to stand on to get into the ring. And you can actually see Stone Cold Steve Austin walking towards me. I don't know if he did this on purpose. I don't know if, like, what the thing was. I don't know if he did this on purpose or what if it's just coincidence. But it looks like he walked over towards me. Just in case I biffed it, my ankle gave out. I don't know, but you could actually walk. You could see him walking towards me yeah. as I was getting in, because I sat there for a second just before I walked in. I sat on the apron, and I was just about to get in. And I didn't know if I could actually stand with my one ankle getting in, and I said, "Okay, here we go." And you could actually see Steve walking over to me, and I appreciate that. I don't know if he did that on purpose or not, but I'm going to say he did. <laughs> but, uh, and you know, honestly, kind of- I, Steve seems like he's you know he is such a really really nice guy. And really, you know, is, is somebody that you guys, I'm sure, learned a lot from as far as what's going, you know, paying your dues and, and, and being around WWE, WWE superstars and so forth. And he looked like he was a lot of fun to work with. And he was. And we've had some contact after Tough Enough. And, he, and the show's over. He doesn't have to tell me anything or talk to me whatsoever. He could just go on with his regular life. And uh, he actually, we, I've had 
the con- cell phone conversations with them. I have a cell phone number. And uh, I respect the living hell out of him because one thing that people don't understand is Steve Austin is Stone Cold Steve Austin. So yeah. it's just a switch. We saw a lot of Steve Austin, which surprised me. I thought I was going to get a finger and et cetera the entire time I'd be there. But I saw a lot of Steve Austin, the actual, as a man, rather than Stone Cold Steve Austin, blowing fingers, yeah. drinking beers, and giving fingers. <laughs> now, you were at WrestleMania this past year in Atlanta with, with the rest of the Tough Enough cast. And honestly, I'm going to mark for a second because I am, and I grew up being such a fan of The Undertaker. Please tell me you got to see him in passing, got to say hi to him briefly, anything? Because, you know, I, I, that's like a huge thing for me because I'm like a huge Undertaker fan. Um, We were only allowed in the backstage for about .2 seconds as we walked by. We saw Hyatt uh. Trish. And uh, oh, well, WrestleMania cool. cool. background is really kind of uptight, uh, which I understand. It's the biggest show of the year. However, of course, I I've been trying to get in the WWE for quite a few years. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, I have met him. I have shaken his hand, and I have looked straight up in the air because that's how freaking tall he is. I go up to his boobs. I think that is a very large individual, and uh, he from all the stories and other things, he was always nice to me. I have met him before, it just wasn't during the toughness process. So uh, he's a very large man. Though I felt like I was shaking his uh, like his four, his finger because I couldn't get my <laughs> hand around his big old mug. They're like banana hands. Him with the Big Show. I imagine the Big Show for sure. That's very cool, man. That's very awesome, and I and it's like almost like you were you started out on something that you're definitely headed back that way, and that's very awesome, and. There's like there's I want to ask you about Bill and Trish. How do you feel about them? Love them. Uh Trish was really like the soft voice number one as a man and I know you're a man, but uh as a man hearing a beautiful woman speak is just good. Hearing a beautiful woman speak when you're on the verge of death about to kill over and because you're working out so hard <laughs> is amazing. But hearing from Trish Stratus <laughs> is just it's like being in second level heaven. But uh, she's a great girl. <laughs> she's a great girl. She's really she's Very really cool. nice. And uh, Bill's like to me is like the uncle that is going to pound the right way into you, whether you want to or not. And uh, he was like the army sergeant, and I respect living hell out of him. I really do think he's a great guy. Um, but he will pound pound it into you, and it's his way. He's not drill sergeant, and you're gonna learn the right way. So, now uh, I actually marked did. out for a second about the Undertaker. Who, who would? I mean, in your time with WWE and Tough Enough, who did you kind of either through a passing by, and maybe it was I think you might even said it was Sean, but who have you actually seen, met, talked to that kind of left you in awe? Like you were like uh, you're almost like you're stepping over your words, kind of trying to talk, and you're like, oh my god, am I really talking? Or oh my god, I really saw this person. Who left you like that? Um, I still sometimes get that effect with John Cena because I I really do I think John Cena is like the epitome of professional as well as like laid back. He ended up on Tough Enough staying with us for hours and just hanging hung out with the crew. Um, he I've met him plenty of times before just shook his hand and then I just stood around at gorilla position while he's BSing with the other superstars. And uh, I just I I try and do as much research on everybody as possible to okay this is how I should be da 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 da, da and kind of mold myself as this is how I am I just want to take certain qualities from them. However, I, I get I get that sometimes from John Cena just because I know he's the con he he was the constant professional. However, he's succeeded so well and done so well and is probably the hardest work in this business. But Shawn Michaels I get within 20 feet of him and and I I become like a little pansy. <laughs> um, <laughs> still, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels is the reason I'm doing this. So, uh, and, and I, I haven't had the chance to shake his hand or talk to him. So, uh-huh. like that, I haven't done it. Factor is still there. John Cena. I love talking to him. Like, and I still get starstruck when I can have a conversation with him. And, I, and I've had conversations with him. It's just I've never had that conversation or the contact with Shawn Michaels that I'd really like to. Um, and so that whole. If I'm within 20 feet of him, I'm like, oh, my God, there he is. Oh, man. What do I do? Yeah, I just get, like, where I put my hands kind of thing. Yeah, Shawn Michaels is still the man that I will still get, oh, man, about. So, and uh, unfortunately, he's retired. Well, good for him. But 
I hope I do have future in, a future uh, saying hi with him and maybe get some advice from him. That'd be great. Now I'm going to ask one last question, and it's going to be in the sense like, have you ever thought you personally, uh, being of course a fan and just being able to do something as as I'm doing right now, have you ever thought about beginning into radio and just kind of ch- you know chatting about your experiences in wrestling and and just doing what you know kind of similar to what I'm doing here? Have you ever thought about doing something like that as like a, not necessarily for a job, just for fun, just like a pastime, so to speak? So pretty much, pretty much be like at your role. Basically, yeah. Well, I've thought about it, but uh, it's, well, I don't know what I tried about. I, I can sit there and talk about Raw, but uh, there's enough people that do that will that will do that much better than me. And the more I watch Raw, the more I want to be part of it. Um, so yeah, it's crossed my mind. But uh, the more I talk about it, the more I think about it, the more I want to be it. And uh, I want to be in the ropes rather than outside. So uh, well, I can respect I, it's that cr- totally. But here's the, here's the thing where I was going to lead into with that, Martin, and I definitely enjoyed chatting with you tonight. But here's the thing: I want to actually extend an invite, and if you ever want to just come and uh, be a co-host with me and chat about certain shows or anything you want to maybe to promote your 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 upcoming shows that you have, I, the door is always open. I can, definitely wouldn't mind uh, having you on here, even as a co-host. I mean, I can definitely you know ask you some questions or would uh, promote whatever you're doing or what you think about what the current uh, storylines are going on WWE, maybe Impact or what have you. But there you go. I mean, if you'd like to come on anytime, please. You know, we have contact. You definitely can let me know anytime you want to come on, and I'll get you in. I appreciate that. That sounds fun. Maybe I'll do that one day. And then I do I do appreciate my like having me on the show. I think that'll be really fun, and uh, maybe fans will come and listen to me BS. So, <laughs> well, you know what? This, this, this right is the kind of stuff that people like. Believe it or not, they really like to see the the wrestlers actually show that they they really are regular people, just like you know, just they, and they are. A lot of them don't know that, but see, they, they see them on, on TV. They don't know that they really are. We're just regular people, you know. Most definitely, we're just people, and in all see, no matter what your dream is, chase it. Professional wrestling just happens to be my dream. And uh, I appreciate more than what you guys ever ever know me supporting me on my dream. So uh, if now, you have, do you have any final words for in my listeners tonight that you'd like to say? Any final things that you'd like to talk about, really quick? Uh, number one, thank you for listening. I love you all. I'm gonna do my cheat plugs here. Follow me on Twitter, like <laughs> Zach Ryder does. Uh, <laughs> follow me at Martin Casals. Uh, go to my Facebook at or facebook.com slash Martin Casals. Real original, right? Um, and actually, I will do this. I know a lot of people don't do this. Facebook.com slash T-R-I-S-T-A-N-G-A-L-L-O. That's my actual personal Facebook. Uh, that's Tristan Gallo is what I used to wrestle on the indie scene with, so if you ever get confused, look it up. It's on Wikipedia. It's on a lot of places. That's my actual personal Facebook it's not my fans page. Martin Casals is my fan page. Like it, and then add me as a friend. I appreciate you guys' all support like crazy. When you guys do write me like Ali did, I know who you are, and I appreciate you more than anything. Um, I have a fan uh, who actually waited at an airport, and I really wish I was going to. I always wear a wristband on my wrist. On my wrist. Um, and actually send stuff enough. It's just, to me, it reminds me that the body can do a lot more the way it thinks it can, it's just all up to your mind. Major. And uh, I really, if I see you again, I will, I will give you my wristband. I will do whatever needs to happen. I appreciate you waiting at the airport. But these fans do uh, so much more to me than they know. So I appreciate it all, and I appreciate your time on the show. Not a problem, Martin. It's been an honor and a, and a privilege to have you on. And, uh, again, I thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule, and hopefully we'll have you back on again in the future. Most definitely, and Calabunga. <laughs> Later, dude. Later.